Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. We covered the economy in the first video and we kind of uh, left off with eugenics. Um, we were talking about food, right? About how water shortages could force the world into vegetarianism. There's different reasons, I guess, for it. Uh, some people think that it, um, that it makes uh, men more docile, less likely to resist um, measures such as these, right? Um, basically, they want to call the population. Now, of course, I'm aware that there's protein. You can get protein um, from things besides meat, especially in vegetables and all that. Um, but it's people should be people's choice. I mean, people, <laughs> for the most part, they they don't really determine their own fate. I mean, you can to a certain extent, but if you're a mat, if you're a, a, a rat in a maze. Um, you can tell yourself that you're free and that you have decisions, but you're still a rat in a maze, right? Being steered and directed. In other words, you have an illusion of choices. So we left off with this veiled threats by these neo-Malthusians or uh, eugenicists or um, utilitarianists uh, who believe that uh, they can do whatever they want as long as it's in the, uh, you know, in the best needs of the majority. That, you know, your needs or your desires um, you know, just get swept aside for the common good of all. The mind control, of course, is that what? It's not for the good of all. It's the, for the good of a very select few, a group, very small group. So they have to come up with all kinds of crazy stuff, including especially climate change with CO2, so that you can change your uh, your your lifestyle, right? So we left off with this, right? Um, talking about the Royal Society release. It's a report calling for more death, and Paul Ehrlich, who calls for uh, basically forced sterilization, forced abortions, drugging the water supply, um, he says, what, the population resources multiply together. You have to deal with them together. We have too much consumption among the rich and too little among the poor. So that sounds very um, uh, empathetic, right? Altruistic. That implies that terrible thing that we are going to have to do, which somehow redistribute access to resources away from the rich and to the poor. So, man, that's in interesting because, remember, uh, we know, based off uh, one of the IPCC uh, members, panel members, actually admits that climate change, the whole scam, scheme, plan, goal of climate change is what? To redistribute wealth. That's what it's for. The only problem is it's not going to be done voluntarily. It's not going to be done without violence, without the um, without the uh, threat of the gun, right? How many, and he gives a little scenario saying that, um, you know, 4.5, 4 or 5 billion people might be sustainable in the long term if we're basically living in these little micro cities that they're talking about, mega cities or smart cities, right? Uh, it says we have to, so we have to humanely and as rapidly as possible move to population shrinkage or reduction. And it's pretty crazy because he goes in there talking about, uh, can you go over the top without a disaster like a worldwide plague? And he actually uses uh, these these viruses like the bird flu and that that have been engineered to leap to humans and from animals and stuff like that uh, for eugenics. And he uses that as an example. Catastrophic disasters because the more people you have, the greater chance of some weird virus. He's talking about an engineered virus by the eugenicist transferring from animal to human populations. There could be vast die off. So in other words, that would be a good thing. And finishing up says what the Royal Society terms systematically decoupling economic activity from environmental impact is actually a rephrasing of Agenda 21's plan to gradually deindustrialize the West as well as the creation of mega cities in which the bulk of the world's population could be locked up to uh, make them more manageable or what the Royal Society calls the potential for urbanization to reduce material consumption. And that's what greening and CO2 is all about. According to an MSNBC article, one of the scientists while speaking about human population worldwide say, we certainly don't want them strolling, he's talking about the slaves, them strolling about the entire countryside. We want them to save land for nature, i.e. for them, right? By living closely together. So they want the slaves that are in the cities so they can be more easily managed. And then the elites get their own countryside with their or organic foods and produce and meats. And of course, they will be highly protected and secure. And it says here, uh, in addition, the professor says, ending human population growth is almost certainly a necessary but not sufficient condition for preventing catastrophic global climate change. Reducing current, current human numbers may be necessary in order to do so, 
So there's many that will say, well, well that's, I agree with it. There's too many people. Well, my answer to them is, is you're not going to create a law or I don't agree with you creating a law, putting a gun in my face, telling me what I can and cannot eat or put in my body or grow or something like that. And, um, you know, if you care so much about it, if you're so altruistic, then you can put the gun to your head, turn that same gun that you're pointing at other people to force them to do something you want and point it towards yourself and pull the trigger, right? Like South Park, go ahead, put the, put the gun to your temple, pull the trigger, and blow your fucking head off. And then you know what? Now we won't have to deal with you anymore. Then you can reduce the world's population. But until then, after birth abortions, a eugenicists are saying babies are a parasitic burden on society in a paper published in the Journal of Medical Ethics. When circumstances occur after birth such that they would have justified abortion, what we call after birth abortion should be permissible. We propose to call this practice after birth abortion rather than in, uh, infanticide. I can never pronounce that, but I think we know what it is. It's killing babies after they're out of the womb. It says here to emphasize that the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus rather than that of a child. This is so crazy, though, because it says here, uh, we claim that killing a newborn could be ethically permissible in all the circumstances where abortion would be. Such circumstances include cases where the newborn has a potential to have an at least acceptable life. And this is what they're doing, but the well-being of the family at risk. They're already doing this with genetic screening, to, uh, and eventually, in the, I think it's in Scotland, and that where they're looking for people that are, quote, drug addicts or prone to be violent. Those are the two ones that they look for. And say what you will, people have a right to go through their lives and determine their own fate and not be squashed before they even have a chance. But eventually the screening will be permanent. It will be um, mandatory. And those that do not have acceptable traits, as they say, uh, they, will, they will not be able to come into this world. And those that are even born to this world could still be put down in the name of uh, it being ethically permissible. And I, I, I didn't joke about it, but I mentioned this a couple months ago about how they call it out-of-womb abortions, you know, out-of-womb abortions. So it's probably been a, a long, uh, around for a long time, but either way, you know, they're pushing this forward, out-of-womb abortions, after-birth abortions. Do I want to put a, a gun to your head and tell you you can't do it? No, go ahead, do it. So there is a reason why um, the government's in the business, because they carry out eugenics as well. State funding of abortion under Medicaid says here, uh, state policies in brief as of August 1st, 2012. So it was first implemented in 1977, the Hyde Amendment. But as of right now, it says that uh, most do as a result of specific court orders. So certain uh, ones are paid for and certain ones are not paid for. Should the government pay for birth control, Canadian doctors, eugenicists, think so. So the issue of government funding for contraception has been fueled fierce ideological debate. It says recently with our friends south of the border, yet here in Canada it appears our own debate is stirring. And the carbon tax, silence overtaken by events so you don't hear much or expect to hear much about climate change at the Republican Democratic conventions. There'll be plenty of speeches of unemployment and but the threats posed by global warming are decades away or so we have been told in recent years. So it says here, climate uh, alarmists are now pointing to evidence linking rising global tempers, temperatures to the extreme weather we're seeing around the planet. So this is the New York Times uh, basically, what, promoting enacting a steep carbon tax, up to $80 per metric ton of emissions, it says here, would eventually result in climate stability. And they're actually saying it would help balance future budgets. It says we need substantial additional revenue. Of course, a carbon tax is a solution to climate change. This is from Forbes going off the New York Times. From August 16th, data from leading IPCC scientists show global temperatures have dropped unprecedented one degree Celsius since 1990. If you ask renowned scientists from this panel what the mean global temperature is today, they would tell you it's about 14.5 degrees Celsius. If you ask them what it was 20 years ago, you'd expect to have the answer to be about 14. Surprisingly, their literature from 20 years ago tells us unanimously that in 1990, the global temperature was 15 degrees Celsius, one degree Celsius more than today. You can look at their own charts below. It says here's a German government chart based in whatever, global temperature in 91, 15.5. 
1988, Der Spiegel reported a global temperature, mean temperature of 15.5 degrees, along in 1992. So 15.5 appeared to be the consensus among the scientific community. But now these scientists from the IPCC are telling us that the current mean global temperature is 14.5. There you go, in a presentation in Hamburg, it confirmed the current global mean temperature is 14.5, along with the fourth assessment in 2004 of 14.5. So, finishing up at that rate of cooling, it says here, or calling 15.5 in 1990 to 14.5 in 2010 will be deep into an ice age by the end of the century. And that's personally what I think is going to happen. So, it says here, an Arctic peninsula warming, unusual but not unique. A new research conducted by the British Antarctic Survey suggests that the recent temperature rise and ice loss are not unprecedented. According to the report, it says here, although the peninsula is warming rapidly, a previously based in temperature slightly higher than today. Studies show the peninsula experienced significant warming 15 to 12,000 years ago, becoming about one degree centigrade warmer than today. So they always want to, the eugenicists and these globalists always want to take these radical actions to avoid this doomsday scenario while at the same time calling for the, how the population needs to be called. They say what? Oh, we got to pass a CO2 tax and we got to start uh, geoengineering, which you're already doing. It says geoengineering clouds to slow global warming, taking a look at the possibility of using futuristic ships to shoot salt water high in the sky, creating clouds that reflect sunlight and thus counter global warming. So they go on to insult both mine and the viewer's intelligence by saying it sounds like science fiction because, well, if you just walk out your door, and look up, look up sometime, usually about at least one day a week, you're going to find these planes that are spraying. Um, you're going to also be able to go on your internet and look up the Wellsbach cloud seeding patent that has been around by uh, for a while, since what, the 70s by Howard Hughes Company. And uh, they actually said that, you know, part of it, one of the drawbacks is that it could actually create warming. So, and the, what is it, the National Oceanic um, Association, uh, Basically, they're the ones that are heading it up, along with the Department of Energy, the National Laboratories, the U.S. Navy, all of these different universities. They're all working together with these programs, weather modification programs. So it, it, it does exist. It is happening. I, just, I, I don't understand why they don't just come out and say they're doing it if they're supposedly helping. Well, I know the problem is because it's not uh, morally um, permissible. And yet they're going to do it anyways, without telling you. And we're still on climate change and uh, chemtrails. Pat Robertson's CBN suggests God moved a hurricane to protect the Republicans. That's right. That's right. He moved the uh, hurricane. No, that was could have been um, caused by cloud seeding. Who knows? Cloud control could tame hurricanes, study shows. So there you go, right from there, August 23rd. So... And again, they're just insulting our intelligence and our and our awareness. Theoretically, this is not fucking theoretical. The U.S. Navy was performing these tests to move hurricanes back in the 50s. So they, it's not that they could just, they're trying to um, uh, suppress them. They can create them. So some people think that the Katrina one was caused by another country or our own country. Um, and they're comparing this Isaac to Katrina, which is kind of scary. One of the results, though, of uh, all of this um, uh, possibly harping of the uh, cooking of the ionosphere, uh, possibly just the sun, you know, the sun, uh, more solar flares, uh, whatever it is, it's causing mosquitoes and fleas uh, uh, basically to go crazy. A washout summer brings a plague of mosquitoes and fleas to the UK. Demand for bite and sting creams up 150%. So this would be good for uh, uh, the eugenicists that have these... Uh, engineered viruses to spread. And then you have my buddy the fleas. I have to give my dog a flea bath about every three days. That's how bad it's been. And they say the West Nile outbreak is the biggest ever. So CDC says 41 dead. The only problem is is that it's never been actually proven that the West Nile virus actually exists. It says industrial air pollution and its role in West Nile virus epidemics are merely rarely mentioned though virtually all such epidemics have occurred downwind from oil refineries such as the um, epicenters in New Jersey and Houston, Texas, and southern Louisiana. Interesting, because one of the places where they actually are spraying 
for this West Nile virus is in Texas. Despite fears of the risk of the insecticides, it's also the army spraying in Florida and angering residents, but what, Texas and New Jersey. So what we're talking about here is air pollution. So instead of forcefully spraying people, how about they voluntarily take vitamin C to reduce air pollution effects? Thank you.